Okay, well, using the proposition above, it's easy to show uh, E is linear oper is a linear operator, which means it can go inside and outside of sums and scale multiples. So, if, for example, if I want E of some linear function of X, where X is a random variable, discrete random variable, this should give me A E of X plus B. Okay, or yes, a of x plus b. It just comes inside of that. So let's let's actually do it. So we use the prop. We'll use the proposition, the method two from last time. So this is over all x where p of x is greater than zero, and I just put a little x. Put g of x in here, right? And p of x. Now I just use properties of sums, convergence sums. So this is just equal to a. X, I'll drop the uh, sub notation here. You know what it is. Put some, oh wait, I can't. All right, just a constant. I should have taken that out, right? P of X. Yeah, we can take this out even, so. All right. Okay, well, this is one. This is E of X, so that's my result, right? A, E of X plus B. Yep, okay, um, that can be handy, right? So you can now, if you know, say X is uh, the sum of two dice and I want the expected value of uh, 3X minus 10, you get 11, right? So example, All right, well, one important function is x squared and x cubed, and I guess that's not one, but x squared's the most, and then also x to the n is important. So, um, and actually even the centered one. So there's a very special one. So we define, uh, say, the variance of x to be an expected value of a function of x. So this is equal to e of x minus e of x this is a constant now. This is, has to be evaluated ahead of time in, in your head. Squared, okay? So it's called sometimes the second um, central moment. I am taking the centering x. I'm taking the difference of x from its center, and then I'm squaring it. So that's called a moment in probability. Um, and this is uh, a measure, really, of how spread out x is. So consider the example, for, for example, suppose we have um, x is, x say I have p x of little x is equal to say one, uh, say one half, sorry, these are the probabilities, one half, one half, x equals uh, one, x equals minus one. So e of x is zero, and maybe uh, p w of little w, same thing, half, half, zero otherwise, right, equals, say, a thousand, and w equals minus a thousand, so w. Well, both, both um, ex equals ew equals zero, as you can see, but uh, the variances will be very different, right? So the variance of x is actually equal to e of x minus e of x, but e of x is zero, so it's e of x squared in this case. Um, and e of x squared is equal to one squared times a half plus minus one squared times a half, which is equal to one. Yep. Variance of w, in this case, e, also e of w is zero, so I get e of w squared. And that's a million uh, it's another million right after I square them they both become a million and I get a million so it just shows you um, 
it's intended to give you a second characteristic of a, a discrete random variable beyond its expected value. Expected value is the center. If I were going to graph it, expected value could be here, ex equal ew equal zero, but the x might be distributed uh, more like this. Um, maybe everything's very low here and x is distributed like this. Of course, it's discrete. It might be really look like this, but it may have a lot of points. And so you might get something like that for X, whereas W could be like really spread out here, right? Something like that. Oh, no, I gave you the, sorry, I gave you the, what am I doing? So I gave you the distribution. So these are mass distributions. So you'd have something like this and this for X, whereas for W you have this or this. But you could also have something that's really spread out with a lot of different numbers over here and they're very spread out, but they all add up to give the same center of mass, same expected value, but different, um, radically different uh, variances. So there's a, a good second um, alternate uh, formula for the variance. So alternate form is a var of x equals e x minus e of x squared. I just square the inside here. I have e x squared minus 2 e x times x plus e x squared. And remember, e x is a constant. It comes from the distribution so it's a number even if you're not sure what it is it's a constant number it's not a variable um so now i use the proposition sum over all x p of x greater than zero and i can just put these in here like this minus um let's write it like this this is a big x here because it means the expected value we don't know what that is this is a little x this is a big x Okay, now just distribute it again. It's the same thing. So I get sum these are little x's. And here I get minus, this can come outside here, 2ex and then this one's a, a constant, so it can come outside too. All right, okay, okay. Well, this is this is one. This is e of x, a constant. And this, we don't know what this is, but we know using the proposition the other way, so the proposition in reverse order, this is going to be e of x squared. This is now minus 2 e x e x, and this is e plus e x squared. Well, this is just minus 2 ex squared. This is a constant. Remember, it's just a number. So we get e x squared minus e x all squared. It's another form. The first form really tells you more what's going on, um, that it's this difference between x and its, its center squared, and you're weighting that. But the, the alternate form is often more useful for computation. Okay, we're almost through this lecture. Let's just do an example. Example, simple example, x is Bernoulli, p. Let's use this form, variance of x equals e x squared minus e x squared. We already found e of x is equal 1 times p plus uh, 0 times 1 minus p, so that's equal to p. So this is equal to e x squared minus p squared. Now e x squared, using the proposition, 1 squared times p plus 0 squared times 1 minus p, it's just p. So I have p 
minus p squared, sometimes written p1 minus p like that. Okay, so this, uh, let's just graph this variance of x for different p. If I graph it, I get a downward parabola here. This is one and zero, and you see it's bounded here at a half. The variance is highest when the Bernoulli is a half, you get a variance of a quarter, and it gets very small if p is very close to zero or close to one. So if the probability of success is say 0.999, the variance is very small, it doesn't vary much. Um, most of the time it's one, and it the variance is low, it turns out. When it's in the middle, the variance is biggest, so it's a quarter.